Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will show you how we can encode a shellcode using Base64 and hide it in the resources section of a PE file. This is usually a manual process and we will see how that manual process works. And at the end, I will show you how I automate this whole process using MingGW compiler and make files. With that, let's get started. So here I am in my virtual machine. I have Visual Studio open in front of me. This is where we will discuss the code. And I will show you how I load the resource file over here. And then we will talk about uh, this automated project where I use the make file to automate the whole process of uh, creating the resource file from the shell code and finally creating an executable file in one command. All right, so let's start off with Visual Studio. You can see here that there are no resources uh, created over here. So first, let's create our resource file. For creating the resource file, I'll go to uh, the same folder where I have Visual Studio open. I have a Python file over here. And this Python file basically takes an input of a shellcode file and creates a payload.rc file. Um, I will talk to you about the payload.rc format once I execute this for the first time. So let's execute this file. We have to provide it uh, the um, the name of the Python file, obviously, which is uh, create payload underscore uh, rc dot file. And then we have the input file, which is going to be our shell code. And the output file is going to be the payload.rc. So let's do that here. Uh, python create payload underscore rc dot pi notepad dot bin this is a shell code that i have over here notepad dot bin and it will be embedded in this file payload dot rc so press enter we have payload dot rc file created we can see this and what we are creating here is a resource which is uh, of the name my string and it is rc data and here we have the b64 uh, encoded shellcode now what is this rc data if we look at the resource types in windows we have this whole table over here if we come down we can see that there are fonts and icons and whatnot and if we keep on going down we can see that there is rc data which is application defined resource or raw data i could have used this string table as well but uh, you know rc data works just as fine okay so I like to create my resource file outside Visual Studio. There is a way to create it inside Visual Studio as well, which we will not discuss over here. And now I can add the import uh, or I can add the resource file here. Just select existing item, select uh, the payload.rc and we have the payload.rc here. If we open it here, we can see that we have the resource view in it we have uh, the payload.rc we have the rc data in it we have the my string and we have this um, b64 encoded data over here okay let me close this and let me close this now let me start off with the code we have our main function here and the main function says reading payload from the resource file then we say executing resource payload what happens next is that uh, executing resource payload calls this function here we are basically getting the handle uh, we are basically calling get module handle and what it does is that when you pass null to it it opens a handle to the current uh, file itself so the executable file itself find resource a finds a resource in the resources section of uh, this executable file by the name of my string and the resource type as we mentioned is rc data okay uh, now we load uh, the resource into global memory we can look at these functions here as well retrieves a handle that can be used to obtain a pointer to the first data of the specified resource in memory so it retrieves a handle so we've received the handle over here as we can see and from there when we call lock resource we basically get the uh, the pointer to the first byte so here the base 64 payload starts we get the payload length by calling size of the resource 
so we know how big our payload is and then we uh, allocate uh, memory dynamically to uh, this uh, decoded base64 data we basically uh, set it to zero and then we call base64 decode in base64 decode we are passing our base64 payload we are passing the payload length we are also passing our base64 decoded base64 data which will receive our decoded uh, base64 data and which will be obviously our uh, payload which will execute and after that we are printing the memory and lastly we are calling direct uh, execution on the decoded base64 data if you go to direct execution it's very very simple we call virtual alloc which will allocate uh, the memory of the size of payload length and after that we are moving uh, this payload to our executable memory which we allocated over here and lastly we are calling this executable memory like a function okay now let me go to the resource uh, sorry let me create a release build and control shift b all right so let me open up this folder in file explorer x64 release and we can see that there is only one file over here load uh, sc from resource if i drag and drop this on pe studio we'll see that in the sections we will have a resource section over here as well okay so that means that we have now embedded our um, payload in the resources section as well okay uh, there is another executable called resource hacker which can show you or which can extract the payload directly from this file let me go back to our debug build and let me press play over here we see that uh, the memory is printed and notepad is executed okay all right so we had a couple of steps here and uh, these are the steps that i would like to automate uh, going forward so for that i'm going to uh, use the make files and mingw i have uh, installed wsl over here and in wsl i have this automated folder let me open up this automated folder it's this one and in this automated folder i have the make file in the make file i have uh, the defined gcc and rc which is basically uh, the elf executables which are going to be used to compile our code and let's look at what's happening here we basically call python 3 uh, since i have python 3 installed on my wsl we call python 3 and we use that to call create payload underscore rc dot pi here we are passing notepad dot bin and we are creating payload dot rc from here dollar uh, rc which is this one wind res is used to compile our payload into the payload.o so we have the resource file which is compiled into payload.o and then finally we are compiling all the c files and the payload.o into one output file which is named um, whatever is provided in the output so let's compile this and see what happens so here we have notepad.bin here we have resource payload.o rc payload.o so let me first go and delete these files so let's go here automated and let me clean up dot uh, exe file dot o dot rc i will delete all of these to show you exactly what happens okay and let's call me over here okay so we have a problem i made a mistake that um, that i did not provide a correct output file so let me go through this process once again as you can see the file name is minus os.exe so let me delete these three things and control l make output is equal to out.exe 
all right that's fine and we have our dot exe created if i go to this folder so let me open up another for another terminal here and let me go to this folder and let me call out.exe we see that notepad is open and we have the memory printed over here okay so very simple one click compilation now i have the shell code for uh, havoc as well and i want to show you how simple it is to just substitute uh, one shell code with another so i have just placed uh, daemon over here and i'm compiling this again to payload.rc and the rest of the things are the same is if we were to do the same in visual studio obviously i will have to compile the resource file and then i will have to integrate it into the uh, the solution or add it into the solution and then i will have to uh, play it here i can directly get an executable file okay so let's go back let's go here i will just change one thing in the code i don't want to print out the whole uh, primary memory because it's going to print a lot and let's clean up this folder so remove payload.rc o executable there is no need for this but we are just doing it to show that everything is starting off fresh so this is done and now let's do it again let's rename this to out underscore havoc all right so we have our build over here out underscore havoc and let me clear the screen out underscore havoc dot exe i have havoc running in my cali vm here it's currently empty run this all right so notepad has opened which is not correct let me go back okay the make file has not been saved let's try this once more okay so here we can see what has changed in the last one we had this hash over here and now we have the hash on the next line and this hash has been removed here so this time when we execute this we see that nothing is happening and if we go here we have our beacon on havoc okay interact with this shell ip config slash all okay and we get the output all right so that was a quick video about how uh, the shell code or the payload is stored in the resources section and then it can be this process can be automated fully as well this is an important technique which malware authors use to hide their shell code in the resources of an executable file recently i was reading an article which showed uh, that this was being done by a live malware as well i will share the link uh, to the blog which i'm talking about in the uh, description as well as the link to the discord server where i'm going to share uh, the code to both the automated and the manual applications as well that brings us to the end of this video thank you very much for your time